In these words, we're looking at the long O sound in poem, motor, nowhere, cocoa, and coconut. And here we're looking at the prefix un in undress, unsafe, unkind, untidy, and uncool. So let's go back and have a look at what's happening within these words. Poem um, is just as you sound it, so you've got that long O sound in motor. Motor. Now, the after a T, we quite often use the O R. Um, nowhere. You can split that one there. Now, where you can hear the H after the W. Where you can feel the air, so you know that there's an H there. Um, Coco. You've got a long O sound with the O and with the O A on the end. Coco nut. You've got two long O sounds in that, and we know before A and O. We always use the C for the sound. Now in undress, the prefix un is quite easy to spell, but it changes the whole meaning of the base word to the opposite. So undress means the opposite to dress. Now if you look at the word dress, if you've got a short vowel with a short base word and it ends with S, you know to double the S. In unsafe, you've got the E making the previous vowel and make its long sound. You know that you always use a K before an I for the cut sound. And here we've got the I making a long vowel sound when it's followed by ND or LD, LD such as in child. Untidy, you've got a long vowel sound in the I there. And you've got the Y making that common E sound at the end of words. And that's the most common form of the E sound at the end of a word. Uncool, you've got that long vowel sound there, so you know after a long vowel sound in a short word, you just use one L. Right, if we go back and have a look at what these words mean, a poem is a verse which may contain um, some rhythm and rhyme, and a poet is a person who writes poems. A motor is a powered machine, and if someone has to fix a motor, it's usually a mechanic. Um, nowhere means not anywhere. Um, cocoa cocoa um, is a powder from the seed of a cacao tree and it's often used to make chocolate, hot chocolate, or in chocolate cakes, etc. Coconut is a large oval seed um, and its flesh is used in, often in cakes and in curries. Um, it, the coconut tree is a tropical palm tree and when we, to make it into a, an edible um, food we quite often um, take the flesh of the coconut to make um, shredded coconut or coconut flakes etc to cook with and there is coconut milk inside which is really like a watery substance which you can drink. Um, undress just means to take clothes off. Dangerous, just, um, this one just means dangerous, unsafe. Um, unkind means being um, mean to others, not being the nicest person you can be to others. Untidy means um, that it's a mess, or someone is being messy. And uncool implies that you're not doing the popular thing. Okay, you can do um, the read, sound, syllabify, spell, write, check on your own, and use this time to practice your running writing. Okay, our words today are covering the long O sound, as in go, and we're just using the letter O for that. So we've got poem, motor, nowhere, cocoa, and coconut. And in cocoa, you've also got the OA representation for the long O sound too. In the next um, set of words, we're using the prefix un, so undress, unsafe, unkind, untidy, uncool. So we know that when we add un to a word, it makes it mean the opposite to its base word, as it was. So um, usually writing a prefix before a word is pretty simple to spell. The prefixes are always quite simple. Um, the big thing is you have to recognise that prefixes generally change the meaning of the base word. So down here you have to write the words to match the meanings. Have to think about those and write the words on those lines. Then down here, it tells you, unusually makes a word mean its opposite. So that's what we're doing here. So use the base word and the list word in one sentence that shows their different meanings. The first sentence has been done for you to complete. Joe's room was so, 
His parents said he could not go out until it was, mm, that's a pretty easy one, you've got to create your own for unsafe, safe, unkind, kind, uncool, cool. Complete the sentences down here. So we discussed this yesterday when we went through the meanings, um, what the name of a person is who writes a, po a poem, um, a person who repairs, um, what does a mechanic repair? I won't give you the answer to those. You can have a think about the rest of them. And then have a th think, and you might need to brainstorm this within your group, all the things that you can use cocoa in. And of course, cocoa is a major ingredient in um, chocolate. In this list, we've got the O making its long sound as in go. So we've got poem. Motor, nowhere, cocoa, and coconut, and then we've got the prefix un, undress, unsafe, unkind, untidy, uncool. So, what we'd like you to do here is write as many extension words as you can from the base word and use one in a sentence. So, look at the word poem, see how many word extensions you can make from that. Same with motor, and write one of those extended words in the sentence. Um, define, so here you've got to write your own definitions for some of these words. Then down here you're going to make new words by adding un to them. Now when you add the prefix un, it makes the word mean the opposite to what it did in its base form. Now prefixes often change the meaning of a word, so they're very important from a reading point of view, so you take note of them so you understand what the author has written. But from a writing point of view, it, they're quite simple to, to add to a base word. The tricky bits come when you have to add a suffix to the end of word because that's where all the rules come into play. Now down here you have to write any two of those words that you've made there into a sentence, two sentences. And then this is research time down here, so you might like to do this as a group. You've got to sequence the chocolate making process. Now we've only given you four lines to do that, so you're going to have to be quite specific and you're going to have to keep detail to an absolute minimum. So it's got to be enough detail that the reader can understand the process, but not too much detail that um, you run out of space and you overload the reader with too much information. On this page, we're looking at words that can be both a noun, a verb, an adjective, or an adverb. So we've used them in their different forms in each of these sentences, and you have to identify their form in each sentence. So there's a common word, so the first one is back. We've got back, 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 back. It will be used in each of these ways. So you can circle, underline, cross, or box, or you can colour them, use a highlighter to colour them, or the nouns colour, or the verbs colour, an adjective, a different colour, and the adverbs another colour. Now it may be easier for you to go through and identify the ones that you know you can recognise um, easier. So like nouns are probably very easy for you to so go through each sentence and perhaps find them. And then you know the adjective is going to be describing the noun. So you could go back and find that. Um, now then you could go through and highlight the verb and then you know the adverb is going to be describing the verb. So that might be good order. One, the noun, two, the verb, three, the adjective, and four, the adverb. And just remember the adverbs commonly, not always, but quite often they end in ly, so that may also give you a hint. That will also be handy to remember when you're down here and you have to fill in the correct word and identify the form of the word in each sentence. So here, you're going to use the words light and quiet, but you may need to add to that base word to put it in its correct form. So use pencil to something trace and outline before using the paint. Well, we know that trace is a verb, so we need an adverb to describe that. So you wouldn't say quietly trace, you'd say lightly trace, so we are adding the L-Y there. So you're going to use light in each of its forms in these four sentences and quiet in each of its forms in these four sentences. And then just put the letter, um, A-D-J for adjective, N for noun, A-D-V for adverb and just the V 
for verb in these bracketed lines here. Now down the bottom you actually have to write the sentences. So you're going to use the word fast as a noun, a verb, an adverb and an adjective. So you can't add ly to fast, you can't say fastly um, to form the adverb. So just be aware of that. You're going to have to be very clever in the way that you use this word in, especially as an adverb. 